Welcome to the Victory Broadcast. If this ministry has impacted you in any way, please consider supporting the spread of the gospel by visiting us online and choosing the giving option that works best for you. Now we pray that this message will stir your heart and build your faith. Get ready to receive the word of God. Victory family, it's so good to see all of you today um, for this final installment of our Beside Still Waters series. Um, I think this Sunday morning, those words should have a deeper meaning for so many of you as we're still kind of resting and waiting in the outpouring of what God did for us last week during our Still Water worship night where hundreds of us gathered in God's presence to be led beside those still waters and trust that you're still feeling the effects for those of us who were together of what God did for us uh, on Sunday night. Uh, it was in effect the application of verses two and three. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. And our prayer for you is that in some shape, form or fashion, you was restored, you was revived, you were renewed, replenished, you were encouraged, healed in your mind, in your heart, and trust that you would you would lay hold and keep uh, what you received in that gathering last week. And for those of you who could not be with us, we pray the Spirit of the Lord will minister to you today, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, that His presence and His power is not chained to a room or geography or even a singular gathering. That he can meet you right where you are today. But we do know, we want to just be honest that we've been through a lot over the last year and a half. We know that so many of us have found ourselves in dry places, in valley places, in difficult places. Some of us are just in desperate need of a touch from God, an encounter with the Lord. Some of us are in desperate need of just streams of water to flow into our desert. And if you did not get that last week, we pray some way, somehow, through what we're about to bring you today, um, that the streams of God's presence and His power and His revelation will flow directly to you wherever you are, my brother, my sister. <clears throat> uh, over the past five weeks, I've had the opportunity to read many testimonies, powerful testimonies of how God has been working and moving in the lives of so many of you in our church. Um, as so many of you have been deeply impacted by this series. And how do you pivot from four weeks of teaching? How do you pivot from uh, still water worship night? How do you pivot from something like that? Um, all of that built around Psalm 23. With this final reading of Psalm 23 and an honest conversation that we're getting ready to have to inspire you about the depths and the application of the truths of this timeless passage of scripture. That's how we pivot. We close out the series after four weeks of teaching, after a night of worship, with this honest conversation about the application of these powerful six verses preserved for us in the Old Testament. Let me read Psalm 23 over you one last time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. He's with you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
you anoint my head with oil. My cup, it runs over. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Family, I want to close out our series with this talk called It's the Whole Psalm for Me. <laughs> it's just the whole psalm for me. And joining me for this talk are my guests, my co laborers in gospel ministry, our prayer team lead, Miss Rhonda Johnson, and our worship team lead, Mr. Ryan Taylor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to have a real and honest discussion about Psalm 23, to make application for our brothers and our sisters. We pray you would inspire our speech, you would open the ears of our brothers and sisters to hear, to perceive, and to apply whatever they're getting ready to receive. We pray for an outpouring of your presence on this final installment of this series. May your people be blessed in the mighty and majestic and matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We all sit together. Amen. 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 It's the whole psalm uh, for me. Uh, family, I just want to remind you one last time in this series that Psalm 23 was written a little over 3,000 years ago by King David, the most famous and well-known king of ancient Israel. It was written in his older years um, as he was reflecting on how the Lord had led him in his walk for his entire life. It was written during a time of trouble, a time of difficulty. Uh, if we'll be honest, no one is immune to that. I'm not immune, my guests are not immune. We're not immune to times of difficulty, times of trouble, times of sorrow, times of grief. This is part of the Christian life, and it's in a time of trouble, uh, a time of sorrow, a time of grief, a time of difficulty. Theologians argue about when, but we know it was written in his old age during a time of difficulty. And in that time of difficulty, David sits down, he looks over his shoulder of how far the Lord had brought him, and he sits down and he pens for us Psalm 23. Since its origin, it has grown to become the most widely memorized, the most beloved psalm in all of the Bible. In fact, the most beloved passage of scripture in all of the Bible. More tears have fallen on the pages of this section of the Bible than any other part of scripture. And in a very real sense, if you read Psalm 23, if you've listened to the teaching, Psalm 23 is really a reflection of the Christian life. In all of its nuances, it is a reflection of the Christian life for those of us who have chosen to follow the Lord as a shepherd. Now, it's one thing for you to have heard me preach this to you over the last four weeks, but it's another thing to hear how these timeless words have worked themselves out in the lives of people who are brothers and sisters, hence my guests. Uh, I want you to listen very carefully to this, what I'm calling an unscripted conversation. I'm getting ready to have with my guests about Psalm 23. And by unscripted, I mean they have no idea uh, what I'm about to ask them. Um, they have not seen my notes. They have not been briefed on what is in front of me. And I did this on purpose so that our conversation can be guided by the Holy Spirit and that our time together will be as authentic as possible. Um, <laughs> will be authentic as possible. And so we're getting ready to have a Holy Spirit inspired conversations about not only the teaching from the last four weeks, but the application of that teaching. And what does that look like in context in the lives of real human beings? And my prayer is that our personal experiences, their personal experiences um, would serve to be a source of encouragement and inspiration and a blessing to you. Um, now, Psalm 23 has four natural divisions. Those four divisions, they gave birth to the four messages I preach to you in this series. Somebody else can argue differently. As a student of the word, I estimate that Psalm 23 has four natural divisions. 
Um, I'm going to take my time to walk us through those four divisions, and then we are going to quickly have a conversation around those four divisions. And at the end, we're going to speak some final words over you and pray for you. Let's unpack this first division of Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, David declares the Lord to be a shepherd and a guide. Uh, inadvertently, he declares himself to be a sheep. He is determined to be content with the provision of the Lord. <clears throat> Here's my question for my guests. Rhonda, I'm going to start with you. We're going to go ladies first. Um, if we just be honest, uh, it is natural for us as human beings to think that we are good ordering our own footsteps through life. Like we just do that by nature. We think that we can be God to ourselves and human beings just have this tendency to just think, you know what? I can make every decision apart from any guidance. I am good at ordering my own footsteps. So let me ask you a personal question. Under what circumstances would you personally be willing to surrender your desires to lead your own self and submit to the leadership of someone else, specifically the Lord? You're a human being. Mm -hmm. You know what it is to wrestle with one to lead yourself. Mm -hmm. Under what circumstances did you surrender yourself to be led by the Lord as a shepherd? If I can be honest, I think I had to be forced. Mm. I think I had to be forced because I'm hard-headed, and sometimes I have to learn the hard way. So you keep doing it until, you know, the knot gets big enough where you're like, okay, God, I surrender. Wow, you know, so I, I mean, if I could be honest, I think it comes after trials and tribulation. You don't always get it on the first time. So I think to truly give yourself over, you have to realize, look, I, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I need a savior. Wow. You know, it forces you to realize that, you know, you're in need. Mm -hmm. you, you need God. So you for know? you, it was it was failures and bumping your head that made you realize I need a shepherd. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Ryan, what about you, man of God? Under what circumstances for you? Did you realize that you were at a place where you were ready to surrender your life to the leadership of the Lord as a shepherd? That's a really good question. And so I think about, I was, I was 12 when I gave my life to the Lord. Um, I was really young, grew up in a, a Christian home from the nutshell. It was like, you know, birthed on a pew. Uh, you know, a lot of people make that joke, you know, that you're birthed on a pew. Um, for me at 12 years old, it looks a lot different than what I am at, tw at 29. At 12, the only circumstance that I needed to lay my life down was the circumstance that happened 2,000 years ago. Mm. That, that Jesus is who he says that he is and that his promises are yes and amen. And if he said something, we can take it to the bank. And that was that childlike faith at 12. Now, from 12 to 29, you give your yes to the Lord and he sees your words and he sees your intention and he sees your heart. Come on. But what's so beautiful about it is, is that he wants to take us to a deeper place. And so you get to 17 and 18 years old, like I was, and I give the Lord my yes. But he's like, there's rebellion there. Mm. And you want to do your own thing and you want to do your own little, you have your own little mission. But Ryan, you've got to submit to something. Mm. And, and when he put me in that situation, I had to look back to when I was 12. Lord, this hurts. Mm. But I gave you my yes. Wow. And so... What circumstances did it take me? I think it's twofold. One, it's what he did 2,000 years ago. Cross. That was enough for me. The cross. And then on the back end of that, sometimes he does have to orchestrate circumstances that are painful, that hurt, that build our character because he's in the character building business. That's good. And so because of the first place, I would say whatever circumstance that he would orchestrate for me yeah. to give my yes, yeah. that's where I lay down. Wow, that's good. So let's let's go a little bit deeper in honesty. Has it always been easy for you to follow? Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and struggled a lot. Struggle a lot. So has it always been easy for you to follow? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> so for for the people watching our church family, let's let's go a little bit deeper in honesty. What what things in you or around you has made it difficult for you to follow? Just my desires, mm. you know, just. <laughs> the things I like. You know, I often pray God save me from the thing I like. 
you know, there's wow. just whether it be sin or whatever, there are just things that we like. <laughs> and I'm like, that ain't good for me, but I like it. So, you know, you need the help of God to just keep you. The, just the desires of the world stuff look good. You know, you want to try look it. Good. And people it look be good. Things and people. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. And so you just just your personal desires and what you want to try, what you've never done before. We yeah. we feel like what we've never done, we tend to feel like we missed out. You know, mm. and so it just it just makes you want it. You just just your personal desires. Mm. Mm. What kind of things have made it difficult for you to follow? I would say pride. Mm. Pride, like yeah. it's really it's really the root of so many different things. Pride and That's fear, good. but pride for me, um, and not so much on the arrogant end. Because when people think pride, they think you know, like oh, you're bigger, or you want to be the big man, and you think that you have it. But sometimes pride looks a lot like insecurity. Mm. and feeling mm. small. Mm. And then so you walk into a room and then you feel like you're super duper small and everybody's better than you. And then you overcompensate mm. to try to be the biggest person in the room. And so pride uh, gets in the way of that. Um, and it makes it really difficult. And it's the Lord, like the, the circumstances that I was talking about earlier, those have been the things that God is trying to tap into yeah. is yeah. that pride like your your insecurities and the things that that hold you back they're not a hindrance to me yeah. and if you think that your weakness stops my might and my strength you got to come down some now that's the, hold on you got to come back with that one more time <laughs> if, if we think our weakness hinders god we got to come back one more time yeah, unpack that a little bit yes yeah, so <laughs> that that's powerful so it's just like it's the it's the reverse. It's the reverse, you know? Like you 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 enter into a place where you believe you can't like God, I don't have it. Like God, I don't have this yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um my pocket is empty. My well is dry. Lord, you're calling me to do this thing. You tr entrusted me to it. Come on. And then I look at you and I say, "God, I'm not going to do that because yeah. I'm not good enough." Mm. And his response is always going to be the same. His response is going to be the same now as it was to Moses when yeah. he sent Moses to uh, Egypt uh, and said, you know, he said, I can't speak. I've got a stutter. Right, he right. said, I'll put my words in your mouth. Yeah. And so, like, it's not when it comes down to following Jesus, it has very little to do with our ability. Yeah. yeah. But it has everything to do with who he says that he is. And so. That's um, good. Any, That's yeah. so good. Hold on. I, I, I got to jump in with this right here. <laughs> Ryan said, when it comes to following Jesus, it's less to do with our ability, but everything to do with what he is. You mentioned Moses, and I think Moses is a good example of this because in Exodus chapter 3, when we when we kind of introduce to Moses, he's a coward. Mm -hmm. He's afraid. Yeah. He doesn't want to go down to Egypt. You go about 10 chapters later, we get to Exodus 13. He's standing on a seashore parting oceans with a staff. Yeah. And, and what changed? Yeah. Did, did Moses change? Or did his trust in the character of God change? Yeah. So I think as he, as we walk with God and as we see his faithfulness, as we see his deliverance, as we see his goodness, we grow in confidence that he's able to do what he yeah. said he'll do independent of who we are. Yeah. Yeah. So then that way what Ryan is saying is true. Our insecurities then does not become a hindrance to God performing what he wants to do in our life. Yeah. So much as we don't live and die on our insecurities, yeah. we push through them mm -hmm. for God to do what he wants to do. So let me let me give you this follow up question then. Now, based on your experience, you've been walking with Lord since you was twelve. Would you rather lead or be or be led? I'd rather be led. <laughs> Somebody in the studio say Amen. amen. Hey, y'all could talk to us in the studio. <laughs> you would rather be led. I'd rather be led all day long. Why? Why? Who am I to be a leader? <laughs> yeah. Over your own life. Over my own life. Yeah. Who even leading other people? Like, who yeah. am I to be a leader? Like, it's Christ in me, the, who's the hope of glory. Yeah. Who am I? Yeah. Even as a lead, I'm coming down to follow. Yeah. Mm. Come on. And so, I would rather be led, even 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 on the throne of a king. Mm -hmm. You know, I would still rather be led. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, good. Yeah. What about you, Rhonda? Would I, you rather lead or be listen, led? I'm the same way. <laughs> lead me. <laughs> I'd rather be led. I mean, w when I think about it. It's it's less work for me. Mm. I mean, it just takes come more. On, come on, come on. Unpack that. You know, I, you know, we we often pray. We're like, you know, God, tell me what to do. And then when God tells us what to do, we don't. And I mean, it's just simple. If He tells us to do it, do it. It's not always easy, but it's simple. You know. And I think just submitting and and we ask God to lay it out for us. You know, give me this. What do you want me to do? turn here? Turn right. We want 
we we want that. You know, God, you, did you say go left? We want those simple. So just leave me. It's just, I've yeah. seen, I made enough mistakes and I, I keep ending up in the same <laughs> ditch. So it ain't working. So I don't want to be my own God. I'm not good at it. You know, so when I realized how much I failed and just seeing that when God does things, it's a better outcome. You know, there's, mm, it's not just, good. when I make decisions, it often can be about me. You know, but when God is in, in control and God is leading, he's checking out you and you and you and keeping everybody else in mind. He's just better at being God. So, 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 Rhonda, you just said something I think is so profound. And I want to reiterate this. You said two things I thought was powerful. One, you said, you said the, it's less work for you to be led. And when God does things, the outcome is much better. Yes. So as, as, as Rhonda was talking, family, I was kind of getting this image in my mind of the GPS on my phone, that Maps app. Mm. And I was thinking to myself, <clears throat> I, 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 remember, I remember this time I was in Texas and I was lost. I, my GPS wasn't picking up on the satellite. And I went into the store and I was asking for direction to this event I was trying to get to. And, uh, and the guy looked at me. He was like, um, go out here and make a left and a right. He was rude. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I supposed to do after that? Mm -hmm. so, so what I felt in that moment was frustration mm -hmm. because there was no way for me to get to where I was going. And, and I think about back in the days when we, you know, y'all are much younger than me, but we had to print out maps before we went someplace and try to, <laughs> when, when you, yeah, quest. map quest, map, map quest. quest. Man, when you, when you get to the public to make a left, when you go to see a stone at three miles up, make a right. And if, if you think about, think about life right now without your GPS. Th think about all the places we go using that GPS. Wow. How much difficult would it be to get to these places if we did not have that GPS? Yeah. And so I think what you were saying was so profound. Yeah. It takes the work off of us from trying to m make sure we get into the right place yeah. by just following the Lord, following the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then you said something else so profound. The outcome of following him is much better. Yeah, It's much better. So then you, you sound like you're speaking from experience of not following him yeah. and where that outcome has led yeah. you. Hard head. Hard head. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, let me ask you a question, Ryan. What is it about heaven or your thoughts of the afterlife? that compels you to want to follow the Lord and submit to him as a shepherd. Because we're going to get to the end where David talks about forever. But before we get there, what is, what is your thoughts about heaven? When you think about heaven, when you think about the afterlife, what is it about heaven and the afterlife that compels you as a young believer to want to follow the Lord? Yeah, so I, as you were asking that question, I was even thinking about um, just the fact that our lives are but a breath. Like it's literally like a centimeter on the on the on the tapestry of what eternity is. Mm -hmm. And if I were to put all of my stocks in that one small wow. thing mm -hmm. for what it was, how foolish would I be? Mm -hmm. Having known the, the beautiful things that God has done, what he's doing now, and then the things that he promises that he would do mm -hmm. and will do. How, how foolish would I be to sow all of my treasures into this little small thing? How foolish would I be to, to take this life that he gifted me with? First off, it yeah. doesn't even belong to me. Yeah. To take something yeah. that, that was given to me and then squander it based off of what my flesh wants to do. Mm. It's such a <laughs> foolish thing. So, so, so if, if I'm going to give him my life, I have to go back and follow the things that he said. That's good. Go into all the earth. Mm. Preach the gospel. Make baptize them in the disciples. Father, the Son. Make disciples. Yeah. In Matthew, he said. And so if I'm not doing that for the sake of what's, down, what's to come, yeah. what the heck am I doing? Mm. What am I doing? That's powerful. Rhonda, what about you? That, that, that's, that's powerful. Yeah. When you, when you, I like how Ryan is talking about the gospel. In a sense, I can hear nuances of we're going to give an account for what we've done now. Absolutely. When you think about heaven and eternity, um, what about heaven and the thoughts of the afterlife makes you want to follow the Lord? Well, first of all, I think for me, I would have to be a fool to think that this is it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think about this being temporary. You yeah. know, I think about <clears throat> this being this. This can't be it. And so you, to me, it makes sense that what I do here is going to matter later. Right, um, right. That that just makes sense, and so you try your best to make sure that you're. It's beyond being a good person. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So okay, Lord, what is it? What is it that you have for me to do here? Like, so, so in agreement with what Ryan was saying. What is it that you would have me to do here to make sure I get there? Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to. <clears throat> I don't want to think I have it here, 
to me, it doesn't make sense that one, two, three, we all live different lives and we all go to the same place. Mm. That just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So what do I need to do for you to get where you are? Yeah. You know, yeah. I think we live in a box. We see things right here. And I, my vision is not enough. So, Lord, what am I not seeing? Now that's good right there. What, what am I not seeing that I could miss out on because I'm stuck in my world? In your you world. Know, in my your world. Box. So I want to, you know, be connected to God to know that there's more after this and not miss out. That's I don't want to be left behind. I That keeps me connected and grounded. Like, okay, this is fun. This is cute now, but this is not it. That's good. Yeah. I like that. And then this, this, this part B of the verse, this last part where he says, I shall not want. Uh, really quickly, tell me, Rhonda, uh, have you ever been in want? And how has the Lord as a shepherd calmed you with your struggle with contentment? Mm. Um, I think I'm still learning that. You're still learning that. I think I'm still learning that. I think, you know, to be honest, I think... So you can admit you have been in want. Oh, yeah. You have had things you desired and don't yeah. have. Yeah, right now. And you're still struggling with the Lord Absolutely. trying to teach you to be content. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I think there are some things that I've that I've desired, and then later you like, oh, my God, thank you, Lord, for not giving me that mm. at the time, mm. right? Mm. So you're a little... You, you become mm. a little confident, like, okay, God, I know if I don't have it now, it's for a reason, but I want it. Mm. I, I, I want it. I feel like I deserve this. I think I'm less without this. There are some things that you just... You, we just want. You, that goes back to those desires again. But trusting God and seeing from past experiences that He knows best. He knows. You know, best. there are times when I when I seen something, I was like, "Oh man, thank you that you didn't give me that. I would have messed that up then." That's good. Or it was just bad for me then, or it just wasn't meant. You That's know, good. just being able to trust what God is saying at that time. You know, whether you gotta, I have to kick, cry, or scream in the moment. Just trusting that his final decision is what's best for me. Ooh, you know. That's good. What about you, Ryan? How, do you remember any times you've been in want? And how has God helped you with your struggle, if any, with contentment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There have been seasons where I have been in want. Uh, like Rhonda and like many of us, um, yeah. I'm in a season of want and desire even now. Uh, so there's this song that I used to listen to in college, and, and the lyric is, uh, if I could write to the kid I was before, I'd tell him he'd get everything he ever wanted, but he would still want more. Mm. And, mm. and I look back, I listen to that lyric, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it really is a condition of the human heart True. That, that we'll start at a place and we say, Lord, I want this. True. He'll give you that. And then you're thirsty for something else. True, true. You're thirsty for something else. When I was 12, all I wanted to do was to sing to the Lord. Mm. All I wanted to do was sing to the Lord. Uh, Lord, I want to give you my life. I want to give you my life. And I want to write songs. And I want the world to see it. Mm. But then he blesses that. And it's like, I want people underneath me to help me push it. Mm. Mm. And Lord... Now that I'm singing songs now, I need a wife, mm. you know? I want a lady. I want kids and a household. Amen? Let's not be religious. Say amen, Hello? saints. Come on, saints. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yes, sir. Let's be honest. You know, you, you start at these things and then you look at, you li- literally, seriously, everybody in the studio is laughing. But it really is a thing, you know what it, it, is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. It is. But I look at, but I look at. It, so. it is no, no. I, I feel that no, yeah. because I, I, I feel that because. Listen, all jokes aside, family. Listen, what Ryan is saying is so profound. I'm yeah. laughing because it's so profound. And what I'm laughing at is not the fact that he has a desire for a wife and kids. Jesus. I'm laughing at the fact that what he is struggling with, I have struggled with, still struggle with. Yeah. A lot of you are struggling with. And what is that struggle? It is, I, I want. I get and I realize it's not enough. Yeah. I want, I get, and I realize it's not enough. Got the new iPhone 12 is not enough. Got that house I wanted is not enough. Got the husband and wife is not enough. Got the car is not enough. Got the salary is not enough. Got the job is not enough. Got that piece of ice. And then this has happened to me so many times. I want my church to go to the size and it's not enough. I wanted, and, it, and then I realize there was only one thing that satisfies. Jesus. But we don't drink from that well enough to be satisfied. And that's why we continue to struggle with contentment. And so the exhortation would be drink from the well that will always satisfy. Jesus. You know, because if, if Jesus is not enough, nothing else will ever be Amen. enough. And if you if you have not felt that, just keep acquiring. Mm. And then you will acquire and feel good. And then you'll wake up one day and that thing will it will feel that's empty it. to you. You will feel like I need more. Yeah. I need more. Because uh, I think what Ryan said is so profound. It's it's our human nature. 
um, it's on human nature uh, and, and such a profound profound articulation. Go ahead. Absolutely. As, as Pastor Philip was talking, y'all, um, in the studio and even the people who are watching online and even to us, I was thinking about even the scripture where uh, Jesus made a promise to his disciples. He says, seek ye first yeah. the kingdom of heaven yeah. and all of its righteousness mm -hmm. and then everything else, it's going to be added unto you. Yeah. And so like God is a, he's so, he's so good and he's such a brilliant shepherd mm. that he gives us what our soul needs. Mm. But he's also so kind and generous that he also will give us what we want. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But he's not going to give us what we want if the end goal is, I just want this. Yeah. Right, right. He's right. not because he's, he's, he's generous, but he's also a jealous God. Yeah. yeah, right. And so no desire that he gives you is going to trump him. Yeah. Right. And so sometimes he'll hold a thing or a desire or something that you want because he's really just trying to anchor your heart to love him. Yeah. Now, that, that's so profound. And before we move on to the next segment, I got to just toss something in right there. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to take what Ryan said and just give it the, the Philip Anthony Mitchell interpretation. Okay. And what my brother Ryan said is what I want to say to everybody watching. If we start to love anything more than Jesus, wow. he will schedule for you a disappointment. Come on. Um, yeah. At some point in time, you will stumble into a disappointment in which all the things we are loving more than him, it, we, will, we, will, we will run into a disappointment and realize this is not, this is not the end all. And so, and so what Ryan is saying, so for in his love, he'll give us our desires and our wants, but in his love, he'll also withhold yeah. uh, to keep pointing us back to him as a good shepherd. Let's move into the second segment really quick. Uh, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me besides a path of righteousness for his name's sake. So David mentions these three places where God leads us besides still waters, green pastures. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. All of these are plural pastures, still waters, um, paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so uh, I talked to our church about um, green pastures being places and opportunities where we find provision and rest. Mm. I talked about still waters being that place in God's presence where we find calm and peace and tranquility and paths of righteousness are those paths he would choose for us that we otherwise would not be smart enough to choose for ourselves. Mm. So here's my quick question to y'all as we move through this really quickly. Have you ever needed rest? And can you recall a time when the Lord made you lie down in a pasture? <clears throat> Uh-oh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so you can recall times when you, you know in your soul you needed rest. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord's grace said, stay here yeah. and eat. Stay yeah. here and rest. Ar articulate that for us. There's honestly, y'all, there's, there's been so many times that that's <laughs> happened. I can't even pinpoint one uh, in this moment. He's done it. It's been a consistent theme of my life. Um, then tell us what does it feel like when, the, when you've needed rest and the Lord made you stop and rest. Even if you can't think of one, let's say it's too many times, but what has it felt like when the Lord said stop and rest? What has that felt like to you? Me being honest, yeah. the first couple days of that, like the inception of it, it is, it is highly frustrating. That is true. It's highly frustrating. That's good. Um, because when you're a doer and your motor is Talk always running Talk and you're an that. energizer <clears throat> bunny, you just want to go, 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 go. Wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning and then sleep, go to bed at midnight. And sometimes people who are who are doers, we think that that's righteousness. Come on, mm -hmm. brother. You're talking to the choir up yeah. here. We equate busyness as righteousness. But what I'm learning in this season, that oftentimes it's not even about what you do. It's about who you're anchored in. Mm. And so I've literally been in a season right now just for, and I won't, I won't speak on it long at all, but I'm in a season right now where I am, uh, I'm writing songs. There are people that I'm discipling. There's, there's a vision that God is calling me to carry, um, uh, you, literally all over the place. And I'm, and if I'm not careful, I'll always be moving and always going and always going. I had to get friends to grab me by my arm and say, Ryan, stop, stop. This is not healthy. Mm. Praise God for friends mm. who will see you going down a path mm. and say, listen, stop, stop. You need, mm. Ryan, we don't need you to shout anymore. Yeah. We just need you to go be quiet. Go rest in the Lord. It's not about how high you shout or how you can shift, in the, shift a room. What is your identity? Mm. Who are you in the Lord? Yeah. Sometimes you've got to go to the backside of the mountain to get the things that you need for the mountaintop. Mm. And so... Uh, so the Lord has worked through people to make you rest. 
Anybody in the studio know what that feels like? Has the Lord ever worked through people to make you rest? Amen. Say amen in the studio if you know what that feels like. Amen. Say amen in the chat if you have good friends amen. that has made you slow down, that the Lord has worked through good friends to make you rest. Thank God for good friends. Yo, if you're in the chats right now, just drop the name of a good friend that's made you rest. Okay, I didn't say everybody, but just drop the name of a good friend that's made you rest because we are thankful for how the Lord works through people to make us rest. What about you, Rhonda? More specifically, can you can you think of a time you've needed either rest or replenishment and the Lord has made you stop and lie down in that place? Um, yep, absolutely. absolutely. Um I think one of my my what is troubling to me is that when my mother passed, I think it's when the Lord be I heard the Lord more. Mm. Um, and I'm going to put you on the spot, Pastor, when probably my most shut down time was directions from pastor. And because you're so used to going and you're so used to helping everybody else, there there grew a hole in me that only God could fill. Um, and in that moment, it took, I needed those who were higher than me to, to shake me, you know, sit down, do this. Pastor was like, you're not going to lead. You're not going to do this. And I was like, then what I'm going to do? I, I, I felt like I didn't have purpose. Um, but those things it, I was using to fill that void. Um, be, you know, we think we're being busy, we're being productive. But, you know, it doesn't mean that. And I, I just thank God for those eyes that he's given me, those extra eyes that help pull me out when I couldn't see myself. Because I thought I was just being busy. You thought it was good. But it's not. You're running into a hole and you're going to deal with, you're going to have to deal with stuff that you never dealt with, you know, before. So I thank God for, you know, my pastor, my first lady. I have people in my life who have helped me and blessed me. So I'm the same with, with Ryan, things I couldn't see for myself. God was like, okay, she need help with this. She's not going to rest. I was also told by Miss Michelle years ago, she told me, don't ever allow someone to put an S on your chest. And I think we perform for people. We, we're there when they need us. It, it brings disappointment because they don't show up. When we need them to, and you done get, gave, 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 and nobody, nobody has your back, your every side like God, mm. you know, nobody. And he be the first that we neglect in troubled times. And so when God says sit down, mm. then you have to sit down. down. He's trying to replenish. He's trying to restore. He's trying to fix those areas in you that we just don't see. Mm. You know, we just, we just keep going. God like sit down, mm. sit down. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the hospital. Admit it. You, you know, y'all came and seen me. You know, I'm sitting there crying like, God, if you get me out this time, I'm going to sit still. Like, no. <laughs> and then you up running again because it's just constant. So me, you know, I'm sure those who know me, I know past thing asked her about rest. I'm just not the one. God have to sit me down literally. So I am blessed by those who are around me. I'm thankful that God has literally put his hand on me and sat me down. That's, that's powerful. I, I want to say this to everybody watching in our family because you're actually listening to Three Doors. Uh, Ryan said something so profound um, about us just doing, doing, doing. Mm -hmm. You know, God called us to be human beings and not human doings. Uh, I'm a person. Yeah. I run at 100 miles an hour. Uh, my wife has helped me uh, slow down with this. But I want to encourage somebody right now because I, I feel like we need to pause and I just need to look directly at you and say this. Uh, there are people right now who it seems like your life is not moving forward. It seems like mm -hmm. doors have closed. It seems like things you have prayed for is not happening or not manifesting. And you're kind of wondering where God is. In a very real way, God may be having you. You may be standing in a pasture. You don't realize it mm -hmm. because it feels painful. Sometimes God has to make doers rest by closing doors. Um, sometimes God has to make doers rest by not answering certain prayers. And then he allows us to go through an extended time. It could be weeks, months, years of just not moving to where we think is forward or where we think is next. And all the while, while we're frustrated, mm. he's just standing there watching you like, there's grass under you. Mm -hmm. Eat. Um, I brought you here to rest. Mm. Take a break. And sometimes God wants us to do that because he knows that he knows mm. the pressures, the blessings and the difficulties of the next season. And you got to be fully rejuvenated before he takes you to that next pasture. And so I want to speak to someone who feels like something is not moving. I'm not moving forward. Is it possible that you're not moving forward because you may be standing in a pasture and you don't see it? Wow. Uh, and all around you, there's green grass. And so as a shepherd, sometimes he will, he will make us light out, that he will engineer the circumstances of our life that you cannot move forward. 
And he will say, stay right where you are. Stay right in that church. Mm. Stay right in that job. I didn't tell you to leave. Stay right there. Mm. Eat. Stay right there. Rest. Mm. Because I think oftentimes, and uh, I'm going to say this and we're going to move on. I think oftentimes we, we, we overestimate what God would do in a short period of time. So it was like, we want to do, we want to do, we want to do, we got all these dreams. Um, but we grossly underestimate mm. what God would do over a lifetime of faithfulness. And so we don't always have to be in a rush. Um, you're not, I, I, you know what? I feel the spirit. I, I need to say, you're not behind. I don't know who this is for. You're not behind. God is not late. Okay. He's going to get you to where you need to be at the time you're supposed to be there. He is a perfect GPS. Jesus. Okay. He knows exactly what he's doing. You don't have to worry about Tom, Dick, and Harry moving on before you. Yeah. Their ministry blew up. They got their book out. Blah, 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 blah. God knows how to redeem the time for those who have yeah. wasted it. He knows how to give back what the locust and the canker worm has stolen. Okay. And he knows exactly where you are. I think it was Ryan or Rhonda, one of them said it, that he might be, I think it was Ryan, might be preparing you in this season in terms of your character to handle what you're about to to do in the next season for someone watching me who just feel like I'm not moving forward maybe God has made you rest where mm. you are in a pasture and I want to say to you eat the grass is under you and rest maybe you just need to rest because a season of work is coming behind this mm. somebody in the studio say amen to that amen. y'all talk to us in the studio um, uh, really quickly this is this is a big question really quickly have you ever walked in a path of unrighteousness mm. opposite of what the Lord would desire and where did that lead you? Wow. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, because the scripture says he leads us in paths of righteousness. And we couldn't find righteousness if we wanted to. Because hmm. we are sinful creatures. Yes. So let's just be honest with our family. Have you ever walked down a path of unrighteousness? And where did that lead you? Um, broken. Mm. Um, it, leaves you, you, it leaves you broken, disappointed. Um, you often have to go back and find out, like, okay, where did this begin? Mm. And it begun when I disobeyed, mm. you know? And I'm not saying that every time that stuff happens, um, you know, That's good. It's, it's for that reason. But That's most times, okay, God, I should not have done that. That's it good. leaves you broken. And, and see, the, the world destroys us. The world tears us up. And then we come back to the Father for the decisions that we made. Mm. So I would absolutely say that it left me broken and it left me disappointed. Broken um, and disappointed. Broken and disappointed. What about you, man of God? Can you recall any times you've walked down a path of unrighteousness and where did that leave you at the end of that path? Man, uh, so many times. I, I, I remember a season not too many years back, maybe three or four years ago, where I was just walking in a chain of iniquity. Wow. Like a chain of like transgression. And for, and for, for, for our brothers and sisters who may not be familiar with that term, what is iniquity? Sin. Repetitive sin, repetitive willful sin, that sin. You just won't stop. That you won't stop, right? Go ahead now unpack uh, that for us. Where did that yeah. leave you? It left me at a place where I was broken. Yeah. Struggled with depression, heavy. Jesus. I just knew suicide was going to be my portion. Jesus. I think about. I even think about just a couple weeks ago. I think it was the early stages of the uh, Still Waters sermon series, where Pastor Philip talked about uh, sheep's. And our sheep and how they how some of them are just so dumb mm. that they'll run off of a cliff. Mm. And I was that one. Wow. Mm. I didn't get close to the cliff. I jumped off of it. And I won't tell you guys the details because it won't bless you. But I jumped off and I, my soul was dead on the inside. Jesus. But God's just he's not just a shepherd who saves us mm. from jumping off the cliff. But he's the God of resurrection come on, for the come ones on. who yeah. died because they jumped yeah. off of the cliff. Come on, yeah. come on, come on, come on. I think about all of the many times that I jumped off and I just splattered my guts on the floor. Come on, come on. And I was broken. Come on. And then the Lord stepped in just like he stepped in for Lazarus. Come on, man yeah. of God. And said, come on. come on out of the grave, Ryan. Come on, man of God. Come, come on, on out of the grave. Come on. And, and I look back at those places and I say, Lord, like, I regret that I experienced what I experienced. But it was good for me. Jesus. Just like David, David wrote in another passage, not Psalm 23, but in another passage, he said it was good for me that I was afflicted. That I may learn. Because if I was not afflicted, I wouldn't have learned your ways. Yeah. Yeah. And so I look back now and it's like those people that I trusted in who turned around and they were stabs in the back. Has anybody ever felt a stab in the back? Yeah. 
like people that you trusted and they stab you and and the Lord's teaching you because you really weren't trusting them. It wasn't the trust of the Lord. It wasn't the love of the Lord. You were trusting these people because you wanted affirmation from them. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted a yes from them. And so you give them all of your information, but then you find out that they weren't mature enough to handle it. And then they cut you. And the Lord allowed that cutting to happen because he was like, you're looking for your yes in all of these people. Mm. But they can't satisfy the brokenness in you. And until Ryan, because I'm hard headed until until you realize Mm. that I am the only one who can fill your well, you will continue to get cut and burned by people Mm. and by circumstances. And you'll go in cycles over and over again. But God Mm. is a cycle breaking God. And the things that I struggled with beforehand, the, uh, the, the unrighteousness that I struggled with before, the, the matters of identity that was in my mind. Yeah. I am beginning, y'all, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. And it wasn't and it wasn't y'all. <laughs> this is my life literally right now. Literally, I'm beginning to see God's promises that he gave me that I thought that I would never have come to pass only because I told him yes. Mm-hmm. And and my yes didn't agree with what my flesh wanted to do. My yes didn't reflect what I really wanted to do. Just like my father told me growing up, sometimes you just got a Nike swoosh it. And if he said it, you do it. Yeah. If he said it, you act on it. And then the blessing and the miracles and the provision of the Lord will follow. So, so I want to, I want to, before we move on to this, this next section, because we're almost done. I want to humble myself in front of my church family and say that even the person with the microphone has walked in paths of unrighteousness, right? Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we think pastors are perfect. Um, I know we we love pastors. We glorify them in our society for their following, their preaching, whatever the case may be. Uh, all pastors are still sheep who are under shepherds leading sheep. Mm. And so I have walked in paths of unrighteousness. And I w- I'm going to share in Rhonda's suffering and share in Ryan's suffering and their humility and say, I carry the scars upon me of, of disobedience. Uh, I have memories of the pain of disobedience. Uh, I'm not going to get into it right now, but but I will I, I will confess. Uh, right now, I'm nursing uh, an injury um, that is that is affecting my life in, in a very serious way um, because of just a moment of, of disobedience. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I, I didn't I didn't react to what the Holy Spirit said, and and as a result of that, I put myself in a position uh, where I was injured. Um, I'm praying and believing God for healing. Um, that healing has not come yet, but I'm believing God for healing. And I pray that even even if he does not, um, that God will give me grace to uh, endure. And so and so I, I am I am sitting here right now talking to you, uh, carrying the manifestation of going down a path of unrighteousness. And, and it's human nature for us to do that. And, and I think I think if we would be honest from your pain to mine's and yours, uh, I think it would be honest for us to say that this is why it's important for us to follow the Lord down paths of righteousness because we in our sinful nature are often not wise enough to choose those paths. Like forgiveness is a path of righteousness. Saying I'm sorry is a path of righteousness. Uh, Being generous is a path of righteousness. Being a servant is a path of righteousness. Being submissive to the Lord is a path of righteousness. Um, Being a good wife is a path. There's so many paths we otherwise would not choose because in our sinful nature, we go down alternate paths. And so uh, hear it from the person with the microphone and my guests that at the end of those paths is brokenness, frustration, injuries, uh, disappointment, despair, uh, thoughts of suicide. Unfortunately, some people have even lost their life uh, going down paths of unrighteousness. So while you have breath, Uh, I want to, as your pastor, just encourage you, um, though they are not always comfortable and though they are not always desirable, um, they are the best paths for us in this life, paths of righteousness. And uh, and I pray for someone, especially as Ryan was talking, that that minister to you, um, that even if, I like what Ryan said, if you've jumped, there's somebody watching us right now, you've jumped off a cliff. Let's just be honest. You've, You've committed some major act of disobedience. You feel like you've missed it. Um, you may be in a dead place. You may be, I like what Ryan said, maybe even beating yourself up mm. because you missed it. You walk down this path and you regret what you've done. Mm. But I also like what my brother said. Um, he's a resurrecting God. Yeah. And he is a good God. Mm. And watch this word. He is a loving father. And, and he knows what it is to redeem, 
uh, to restore and to bring back. Yeah. So if you're sitting at the bottom of a cliff, and that comes from a story I was telling about an incident that happened in Turkey in 2005 when 450 sheep walked off a cliff and died. He's not only the Lord, our shepherd, he's also the Lord, a resurrector. Um, he's the resurrection Jesus. life. So we speak to someone right now at the bottom of a cliff, be resurrected. Yeah. Mm. In the name of Jesus. He is, not, I feel this in the spirit. He's not done with you yet. I know who this is for. He's not through with you yet. He has not taken his hand off you. I know you feel like his hand is gone because you're bloody at the bottom of that cliff, but he has not taken his hand off. He has not taken his spirit away. He has not changed his call and affirmation for you. He is the God of resurrection. And watch this. He's the God of a second, third, 28th, and another chance. So somebody received that in the name of Jesus. Somebody in the studio received that in the name of Jesus. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff that comforts me. So David talks about a season of difficulty, a season of pain. He talks about the rod and the staff. Let's just get straight honest. Have you ever walked through this type of valley? And what was that time like in your life? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So for me, that's a type of place where I almost despair of life itself. Like what Ryan was saying, I may even be battling with suicidal thoughts. I feel like I don't know how I'm getting out of this. Yeah. Have you ever walked through those type of valleys yet? Or you haven't really experienced that yet? Yeah, I have. I definitely have. Um, it's just there are moments where God is all you have. Mm. Um, it's it's lonely. Yeah. It's it's lonely. Um, you can be surrounded by a million people and feel alone. Facts. Um, and so it's it's lonely. So absolutely, definitely. I definitely can say that I've experienced that. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You sure? I'm okay. Those are real. What about you, man of God? Have you ever walked through this type of valley? This is not like I got a flat tire, I lost my job. These are the type of valleys in life where we almost want death. Like, mm -hmm. this is so painful, I don't want to stay here. Have you ever walked through that type of valley? Yes, sir. I have. I have. Um, and I, I touched on it just a little bit, but... Um, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Sick, yeah. And when you've been waiting on something for a long time and then all you get is disappointment after disappointment after disappointment after disappointment after that. disappointment. Yeah. Years prolonged. Yeah. You get to a point where that heart sick starts to kick in and it's like, you know, Lord, I know that mountain season is coming, but by the time that I get there, like I... My my will to live is going to be gone. Mm. I'm thinking about me at this point. I'm not even thinking about the Lord, That's how true. he can restore. I'm thinking yeah. about me. Lord, like, I, I'm not going to be able to even make it there. And and then that's where suicide kicks in. Yeah. And that's where chronic depression kicks Facts. in. And that's even, and not just even human emotion, but that's even a place where demonic influence steps in. Yep, yep. And now the enemy jumps on a weakness now, and now you're operating in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And so I've I've seen I've seen that in short prolonged or short valley seasons. I've seen it in prolonged valley seasons. I've seen it both happening at the same time, where you're in a short valley and a prolonged one all at the same time. Yeah. Valley upon valley. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Yeah. So yeah. so let me do a follow up question with y'all, and then we're gonna move on to this last section. You've been through this type of valley. You've walked through this type of valley. I have walked through this type of valley multiple times uh, in my 17 years of walking with the Lord have shed tears. And I know what it is as a Christian to have suicidal thoughts walking through these type of valleys where you're going through something so painful, you just want an exit from that pain. Here's my question for you. For those watching in our family who may be in that type of valley right now, there are people, there, listen, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in our church. And of them watching us right now, there is someone, some woman, some man, some mother, some father, some husband, some wife, some teenager who right now is in a place where they're going through something so painful, whether in a marriage, their home, um, in their heart, their mind, their physical body. They're in a valley where it feels like I can see the shadow of death upon me. Mm. So here's my question for you, and then we're going to move on to this last segment and pray for our family. How did God comfort you in that valley? I, I, I want to say this. A lot of times when we think suicide, you may not think that um, me as a person, I'm going to take myself out. But there's a spiritual death too. Mm. There's a giving up on God. Come on, talk death about too. That. There's a a turning away. There's a 
I don't want this anymore as in the spiritual side because Facts. when I wasn't saved, it wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't all like of this. this. Right, right. It wasn't like so. This. There's a I'm getting ready to give this up. I've been there. So I that's the that's the death of is this worth it? Mm. Is this worth it? And I would say to you, absolutely, absolutely. There's nothing like if you're giving up on the person who holds the answer. Um, that has the final say so, you definitely will not be restored. You will not have a chance to be revived if you give up on the person who gives you life. So if you hold on, to, if you holding on to anything, let that be your savior. He's the only one that's constant. You know, friends and family, they come and go, you know, are those even those who we love the most, they will leave you. They will disappoint you. But God, mm. God will never forsake you. Come so and, and that what kept me was knowing at the end of this, he's still going to be the only one standing. Come on. That's what kept me. So for you, what I'm hearing is the way God comforted you in those valleys was your reminder of his consistency. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. What about you? You've described those valley seasons. How has how did the Lord in those type of valleys, how did he comfort you in those valley seasons? What did that comfort feel like for you? For Rhonda, it was a reminder of his consistency. What was that for you? One of the ways that I can think about now is yeah. sometimes I had to look back and see all of the mighty acts that he did before the season that I was in. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm in front of a mountain right now, but five years ago, he opened up a sea mm. and allowed me to walk through. Mm. And, 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 and when I did that back then, I said, Lord, I'll never doubt you. Yeah. I'll never doubt you. And that's easy to say until, until you, you're looking up at a mountain. And to look up at a mountain, you've got to be in a valley. Yeah. You're looking up at a mountain. It's like, Lord, how am I going to scale this thing? Mm. And the Lord, the Lord does two things. He did two things to me. He allowed me to look back and remember his consistency in previous seasons. Come on. And that, Ryan, this isn't the first valley that you've been through. Yeah. You've actually been through many. Mm. Mm. And did I not deliver you out of it? Jesus. Did I not bring you in? Mm. And did I not pull you out? Mm. Come on. Will I not do it again? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Or come am on. I a God that I should lie? Come yeah. on. Come on. Heck no, he's not a God that he should lie. Come on. He's a truth teller. He's a truth yeah. teller. And so I had to remember. I had to remember yeah. his goodness. And then I also had to encourage myself in the Lord. Yes. Like that Donald Lawrence song. Sometimes you just got to encourage yourself. Yeah. Encourage yourself in the encourage Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Uh, where I had to look at my weakness and, and go back to what another writer of the scripture say, Paul. Mm -hmm. That in my weakness, your power is perfected. Yeah. I'm not living through this valley, Lord. You're living in me. I'm tapping into the well, the well power that you gave me 2,000 years ago. Mm. If, if you do do it on your own, victory people, if you do feel like you have to do this valley season on your own, you will die. Mm. You will. That's how you're wired. But with a savior, mm. you will not die. Yeah. Somebody in the studio say amen to that. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together in the studio amen. for that word right there. Yeah. So, so for you, your comfort was a remembrance of his consistency. And for you, your comfort was a remembrance of his track record of faithfulness. Yeah. Um, that's powerful. I think for me, my, my comfort is just a remembrance of him. That he is consistent. He is faithful. He is a promise keeper. And for me, it was remember, what else do I have to fall back on? Um, what else do I have for? So his word. His word, his spirit, that rod, that staff, his word, his spirit, they comfort me. His correction. Um, let's, let's talk about this really quickly. Fear. Uh, we all feel fear. You felt fear. I felt fear. We know what it is to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Really quickly because we, we run out of time here. Uh, what happens to fear in the presence of the shepherd? It has to flee. It has to flee. It's, it's no match. It's no match. It just, I've, I've seen, you know when God show up mm. um, because it changes. It changes. He, it changes. Absolutely. And what about you, Ryan? What would you say? What happens to fear in us in the presence of the shepherd? The steadfast love of the Lord cast out fear. <laughs> I like to just use the scripture on the map. <laughs> it's the steadfast love of the Lord that cast out our fear. It's got to be removed. It's got to go. Good, good. And uh, before we move on to this last section, um, our brothers and sisters are watching us. What encouragement would you give a sister who's in a valley right now? I would remind you not to suffer in silence. Um, I was talking to the ladies in, in, in my V group and 
um, a lot of times you feel like you're the only person That's true. Um, that is where you are and you're not. Um, it's, it's a matter of holding conversations. It's a matter of not abusing and forsaking the help that God is sending you. Um, so don't be alone. Don't, don't allow the enemy to talk to you and you just sit there and suffer and keep being defeated. I would say talk to someone. Um, you know, we as people a lot of times don't like counseling. Step out. Get the help that you need it because you're worth it. Um, Ryan made a mention, Ryan made mention of something of us, um, you know, just having that direct one-on-one talk to God. When God calls you something for you to say that I'm not that, it's like a slap in the face. So don't worry about what all you're not doing, what all you're not performing. Don't think about that. Just come run into the Father and just take this thing step by step. You are not alone. We are here for you as a church, as a body, get in a V group, do whatever you need to, because you are worth it. That's good. What would you say to a brother who's watching, who's in a valley right now? Real quick, I would say that it's not about what you feel. It's not about what you feel, um, brother. The the when you're driving a car, right? Your your feelings, your feelings are a lot like the cautionary light that's on the on the headboard. Um, if you're driving a car and that light comes on, right? Do we just keep on driving? Do we do we keep on driving if it says the oil tank is empty? Or do we fix it? Do we fill it up with oil? And so my, my invitation to you would be that your feelings are not the reality. That's good. It's not, something, it's not something that should be ignored, but it should point you to your need for a savior. That's good. And so when you're in this valley season, what makes it so hard is that emotions get in the way. And, and, and disappointment gets in the way. That's and then good. it starts to poison yeah. your soul. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's real good. But the invitation, y'all, is that Feelings, they really don't matter. Yeah. It, it's about what he said. Yeah. And if we tap into the willpower of what he said, mm. the feelings have to get in line yeah. and follow. Yeah. That's good. It, it, he, said, he said, my rod and your staff, it comforts me. Yes. Uh, I see that in modern days as his word and his spirit, both through comfort and correction. Just really quickly, so we could, we could head to this last section, just really quickly. Have you ever felt comforted by correction? Yes. Yes, it saved my life. Save your life. Absolutely. Have you ever felt comforted by correction? Yes. By the word? Has his yes. word and his spirit ever been a comfort to you? What about you? His word Absolutely. and his spirit? Yes. His comfort and his correction? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, you don't despise correction? No. What I about love you? It. you? You don't. There have been seasons where I have. Oh, yeah. oh yes. You know this. Oh, yes. I love Ryan. Yes. yes. Uh, there have been seasons where I have. Y'all pray for Ryan in the chat. <laughs> oh, shababa. <laughs> Y'all pray for Ryan in the chat. There are seasons where I have been, but then there's also been seasons where I have been comforted yeah. in it. Good. And as we move into this last section, and then we're going to pray for our family, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint... My head with oil, my cup, it runs over. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Mm. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. And so David closes out Psalm 23 um, with a different analogy of the Lord, from him being a shepherd to him being a host, mm. preparing a banquet for us, mm. a table. And the position of that table um, in the presence of our enemies, ultimately our chief enemy, the enemy of our soul, yeah. but the people he works through to frustrate us, the Lord David said he prepares a table. And I taught y'all that that table is, on that table is choice food, both of tangible provision, yes, finances, blessing, all that. Yeah. But it also speaks to what we get intangibly, in the face of enemies, mm. peace and joy and comfort and assurance. All the things we need to push through demonic attack um, is what David is talking about. And I talked to you about those things behind you, like my dog Chance and CC. those jingles you hear, those footsteps is not condemnation and judgment. Those footsteps behind you, is, is goodness and mercy. And, and the Lord said, I have released them to follow you all the days of my life. And so, and so here are my final questions for, for my guests, and then we're going to pray. Um, can you recall a time in your walk with the Lord where you felt persecuted by the enemy? Like, you know for a fact, this is a mm. demonic attack. The enemy is persecuting my soul, whether it was direct spiritual affliction or he was working through people to afflict you. And in the middle of that mm. attack, God put that table before you, and you ate from that table. Do you, can you can you think about a time which that really happened in your life? Yes, yes. Um, it's it, it gets complicated, y'all, when your enemies are are, are not unbelievers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Selah, wait, 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 Selah, <laughs> wait, hold on, Selah. 
I, I think they missed that. <laughs> See, uh, it, it gets, so in other words, let's get the, the, the translation. It gets complicated where those enemies are Christians yeah. who in their flesh, the enemy is working through yeah. to frustrate you. Yeah. And how did you eat from the Lord's table in the middle of those kind of attacks? Yeah, so I have seen people talk about me in back corners and say things about me that ain't right. I've heard I've had people gossip about me. Really? And spread lies. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, really? For real? Welcome to my world. Yeah, yeah really? Yeah. <laughs> really? I, I've been misunderstood by people. Yeah. I've been used by people. Oh, yes. But I've also seen the Lord prepare this delicious feast mm -hmm. right in front of them. And when and I'm talking about for believers now. If your if your struggle is with believers, he'll he'll make them your footstool. But really, he's all about the recon he's in the reconciliation business. Facts, yeah. I like to sometimes say that he'll prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And then sometimes your enemies become your friends. Yeah. yeah. He'll they invite do. them to the table. He'll invite yeah. them to the table and eat. Yeah. And that's what a king does. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can persecute me mm -hmm. and jack me up. Yeah. But but because my table is full. I'm inviting you to come eat too. Yeah. I'm not using my kingship to knock you down. Yeah. I'm using my kingship to bring you up. Come it's on. like that's like what Mufasa said in The Lion King. If y'all seen The Lion King, <laughs> y'all I like movies, okay? I really do. He said a king, a true king, doesn't look for what he can take. Yeah. He searches for what he can give. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. from that place, he'll prepare a table for you, and then the people who were fighting you, they'll come back and apologize. Yeah. They'll come back and apologize and they'll ask for forgiveness yeah. from a place of humility. And in a place of humility from yourself, you grant them that and then you bring them up to the table. And that's the reconciliation of the Lord. Now, yeah. that's powerful. Y'all should say amen to that in the studio. Amen. That's, 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 that's. So I'm not even going to follow up on that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to let what Ryan said just be the table. Amen. Let's talk about forever. Okay. What kind of hope and strength? for tomorrow does the Lord bring to you? When, you? when you think about following him, when you think about forever, mm -hmm. what type of hope and strength have you gotten from thinking about forever? Mm -hmm. How has that brought you hope and strength? Um, forever is a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. um, when I hear of, of a forever with the Lord, I hear eternity. Mm -hmm. um, and just knowing and trusting and remembering that this is not it. And knowing that moving forward, I want to move forward with Christ. You know, I think yeah. these things are temporary. So whether it, we experience hurt or deceit or, you know, just when we're when we're crippled, when someone has hurt us or when we, when we went those through those moments in life, just looking forward, just knowing that God is eternal and that this place won't always be. That's good. So, so um, I want to just take two seconds to recap. Uh, something Ryan said and then something Rhonda said. Um, uh, that table, because I too know what it is to be persecuted by the enemy, persecuted by people. I'm no stranger to that. That's part of the walk. Um, from the time we become saved, we, we got that target on our backs. We have an adversary. There's a lot of frustrations a lot of you are dealing with and will deal with as a direct result of demonic opposition. Um, we will deal with that until the Lord comes back to get us. It will be both direct spiritual affliction and, and oftentimes the enemy will work through people, even the closest people to frustrate you. I mean, as close as Peter trying to get Jesus to not go to the cross and Jesus recognized that and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah. I mean, he'll work through your mother your own father to frustrate you. So demonic attacks are inevitable. Um, I like what Ryan said to us as a church. He does prepare that table. There are choice foods in that table. We got to sit down and eat and sometimes invite the enemy to that table in, in the form of reconciliation, forgiveness that leads to healing. Um, but that table is there and, and it's always available for you. Choice food, peace is on that table. Joy is on that table. Assurance is on that table. Confidence is on that table. Hope is on that table. Yeah. All these delicacies on that table. And it's always prepared. We just have to sit down. And Jesus. I like what Rhonda says. When she thinks about forever, how long that's going to be, um, we find hope in that. I will go so far as to say when I listen to what Rhonda said and I think about forever and hope, I'm reminded of something that Frank was in the studio with us right now, our, our lead pianist and lead musician, his father. 
And I said this to you a couple weeks ago. His father called me and uh, we was encouraging each other because his father's nursing an injury while I'm nursing an injury. And I call him Papa Felder, Senior Felder. He said to me, he just reminded me of what, of what the scripture says. And I know this, but sometimes we got to be reminded Absolutely. of these momentary and light afflictions. Jesus. They don't compare to the glory that shall be revealed in us at the coming of the Lord. And so when we think about forever, um, we have hope because no matter what we're going through, no matter what you're going through, um, we, these are momentary and light afflictions. And, um, and when we think about Psalm 23 as a whole, um, we get this beautiful picture of who the Lord wants to be to you, who he has been to Rhonda, to Ryan and to myself, a good shepherd who leads us and guides us. And as Rhonda says, it's much easier to be led than it is to try to figure out this path on your own. Where does he lead us? To green pastures, multiple. He leads us through barren places and then to beside still waters, multiple. Um, when we choose bad paths, like Ryan says, he'll resurrect us and then lead us down paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, his name is on the line. Mm -hmm. We've shared with you valley experiences. Some of you are in them, some of you will have them, but in those valleys, they're only shadows of death. The Lord is with you in that valley. Uh, he promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, and watch, when you come out of that valley, you know what's on the other side? A table. We come out of the valley to choice food. And when we look at Psalm 23, we see this perfect picture of who the Lord wants to be to you to all of his children, our brothers and sisters, to everyone watching, even people watching outside of Atlanta, around the country, in pockets around the world. He is a good shepherd. And so I, I close this time with this final encouragement for you. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Another they will not follow. And he talks about all the other people that try to lead us as sheep. They are hirelings. They abandon sheep. They allow wolves to ravish us and break us and hurt us. There is only one shepherd who will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus. He will walk with you through every valley. He will lead you through every barren place in your life and he will keep leading you beside still waters in green paths. He will teach you how to rest when you need it. He will feed you with provision. He will comfort you in the darkest nights. He will comfort you in the deepest places of suffering. He will uphold you at your weakest points. And when all hell is breaking loose in your life, he will tell you, sit down and eat. Here is peace in the middle of that hell. Here is assurance in the middle of the hell. And watch, I'm going to do this for you now. I'm going to release goodness and mercy to follow you. And we're going to keep this going until I rescue you. Jesus. Until you burst the tape of eternity and stumble into the loving arms of a good shepherd. He is worthy to be followed. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be trusted. His track record is sure, like Ryan said. We have confidence in him, like Rhonda said. He will not fail us. And even when he does not answer, and even when he seems quiet, like Rhonda and Ryan would say, he's still working on our behalf. Hallelujah. His nose is a blessing. His weight is a blessing. Ooh, His hang on a little bit longer is a blessing. His silence sometimes is a blessing. Mm -hmm. He is not only a good shepherd, he is a perfect shepherd. Yes, Lord. And there is no other. There is no other. And the only decision we have to make is the decision David made mm -hmm. to say he is not only a shepherd, he is not only the shepherd. But he is my shepherd. Jesus. He's my shepherd. And that is my prayer for you, my brothers and sisters, that he will be your shepherd. That he will lead you to pastures, waters, and in paths of righteousness. That he will walk with you through every valley. He will bring you to tables and he will keep doing this over and over and over and over again as long as we like ryan mentioned 
Like sheep, we don't keep jumping off of these cliffs. We just stay close to the good shepherd. We listen to his voice. This is our prayer for you, our brothers and sisters. This is our prayer for you. Rhonda, can you pray over our church family? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, hallelujah. Father, we glorify you, Lord. Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah, Father. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for every table that we've got a chance to sit at. Yes, God. God. Hallelujah, we Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we sit at tables that we mm. did not deserve. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. We thank you for your hand mm. being upon us, God. Mm. You mm. are loyal and just in all of your ways. Yes, God. And yes, we God. recognize Hallelujah. that, God. Hallelujah. Victory Jesus. Church, we bow and surrender to yes, you, God. Lord. Yes, Lord. We will yes, be a people. Lord that make noise, God, when it comes to the mention of your, your name. name. Yes, Father, Lord. we repent Hallelujah, of times God. where we walked away, yes, times God. where we rebelled, yes, times where we didn't acknowledge you. Yes, Father, God. we repent. Mm. We thank you for a fresh start yes, in this God. hour. We thank you, Lord, uh, that we come Hallelujah. running to Hallelujah. you, Father. Yes, we thank Hallelujah, you, Lord, Jesus. that you are our everything. Yes, and Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we recognize that you are our Savior. You yes, are Lord. our shepherd, shepherd, Lord. We yes, God. need need you, God. We yes, thank Lord. you, Lord, that this uh, this message will come alive in alive. us, God. Yes, God. God alive. may we read it with a different sight, yes, a yes, different yes, vision. Yes. In the name of, of Jesus, Jesus, from this day forward, hey. we will Shukur never be the same. Yes, God. God, we cling Shukur to your hands the word God. that you would help us yes, be God. transformed. Yes, God. God, we need more of you. We want to be a church, God, that know your name in private yes, and God. not just in public. In the name of Jesus, help us to grow strong in our favor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. God, we thank you. Hallelujah, God, Lord. for standing strong in our lives. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for saving our enemies. We thank you that they'll come running to call on the name yes, of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, we Lord. We pray for those who yes. afflicted us. We yes, pray we pray for, God, for them, those God. who try to destroy us. Yes, God. And we thank you that in the end, we'll all lift our hands and give you the glory. Hallelujah, God. Lord. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, God, Victory Church belongs to you. Grab a hold of our brothers and sisters, God, those who are in need of a touch from you, God. Grab a hold of them. Lift up our leaders, God. Keep us mm. together. God, restore us, Lord. Hallelujah. For we recognize that we can't make it without you. Hallelujah. You are a gentle God, a loving God. And Lord, we acknowledge you. God, we give you the glory. Mm. God, we give you the honor because mm. you are worthy. worthy. You are worthy, worthy of it, Lord. We love you. And in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together in the studio. Hallelujah. Everybody drop an amen in the chat. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together in the studio. Drop an amen in the chat. Hallelujah. If you receive that, drop an amen in the chat. Come on, drop an amen in the chat if you receive that. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, family, thank you so much for joining us for this final installment of Besides Still Waters. We pray you enjoyed this unscripted table talk around Psalm 23. We pray that it was a blessing to you and you heard something that encouraged you. Family, look, we know that it is the end of May. We are heading into the summer. People have been graduating. It's holiday time. The weather's changing. We want to hit the beach and all of that. We got a series starting for you next Sunday that's called Summer Season. And I promise you it's going to be a blessing to you. It's exactly what I said. Summer Season. And it's going to be a inspiration and an encouragement to you do not want to miss week one of our brand new series summer season our MC is coming to share some final words with you and we're going to hang out in the chat for a few minutes as a family you'll show some love to ryan in the chats so some love to rhonda in the chats if you feel like you show some love to your pastor in the chats <laughs> we want you to know that we love you we love you my wife and i we love you uh, we are navigating this difficult season together. We are believing that we will be able to gather soon. We have part one uh, with Besides Still Waters, our worship night. It is our comeback to in-person gatherings. And we just want you to stay locked to everything we're doing at Victory Church. We love you, family. And we can't wait to see you right here at Victory Church Online for part one of our brand new series, Summer Season. Go in peace. Cling to the Good Shepherd. 
Thank you for listening to the Victory Broadcast. We pray that message was a blessing to you. If you have a story or a testimony to share, we want to hear all about it. Send us an email to share at victorychurchatl.org or visit us online under share. Thanks for listening. Go in peace.